Right, you guys might remember this from a while ago when my husband filled up my shop for me. This is just an old wash stain. Um, it does need to be fixed up quite a bit. There's a few repairs that need to be made, but aside from that, it's pretty cool. So to start assessing everything, I do this when I'm first removing all the hardware and breaking everything down to get it cleaned. And I'm just gonna start in this drawer because there's a gap in the panel. All right, so to get this out, Oh, there's a pin nail here. So there's a teeny tiny pin nail here and a teeny tiny pin nail here that's gonna be kind of a pain, but this big nail is usually the one that will unlock these older drawers. It's a fairly large nail for its intended purpose. So I'm going to toss this one and use a smaller one when I go to redo this. All right, since these pin nails are so incredibly small, they're also sunk, so I can't lift them out. Um, what I'm gonna try and do is use this punch to knock them further down just out of this wood, and then they'll just remain in this because another option would be to just cut the nail, but I don't have a hacksaw in here, and I'm definitely not gonna use any of my good saws for cutting a metal nail even though it is tiny. So we're gonna go this route and hopefully that works. All right, that did it. So we've got movement there. I'm just gonna do it to the other side and then we'll pull this out. So I'm just sliding this out a little bit. It doesn't need to come all the way out. I'm just pulling this out to clean out. There was like, a whole box of toothpicks in here. So, gonna clean that out. So as you can see, that's pushed all the way in. I have much less of a lip here. I'll try and show you. So before we had about an inch, inch and a half out and now there's maybe an eighth inch. So they did this for expansion and contraction of the wood, which obviously happens. So what's great is now that I've slid this in, it gets rid of the gap and I can just throw in another nail in the center back here and this will be good to go. Okay, now I have another one of my little punches and I'm gonna sink this one down a little bit. I just don't want that to catch on anything going in and out. So if it's sunk down just a little, it'll be good. Probably will do the same thing to the next person who needs to take that out, which is kind of a pain, but. I did notice a little bit of a crack here, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of a syringe and some high glue and get that glued up. This is the high glue that I use. It is tight bond. Sometimes I'll keep it in a little crock, which is why the thing is coming off. Um, if it's warm enough, it stays liquid on its own. If it's winter time, it uh, turns into a really solid ball of gel that has to be heated up to use. So keep that in mind. I'm going to put this in just a little dish so that I can suck it up in the syringe and stick it in there. I don't like to directly put it in the syringe because then when you put the plunger down, it essentially pushes it out before I'm ready. So I always like to put it in something else and suck it up through the syringe. Here, I'm just gonna loosen this guy up with something really flat and hopefully I don't break it. There's two pin nails here and here. Well, maybe a third one in the center, we'll see. But I just wanna get it loosened up a little. So, 
Here's one of my favorite strippers. It's just the clean strip 15 minute formula. So yeah, it is a shame. This looks like if it wasn't original, it was close to original. It has this little hook on here that I found underneath the paper. And there's a little loop here to keep that side closed. But it's a cool old hook. So I might keep it. This also has a crazy repair along the back, as well as this, which just cracked me up. And I almost want to leave it just because it's so funny. And I really like, I don't know. I just kind of like the old wonky repairs that some people do. Sometimes they don't, sometimes they get frustrated, but I think that one, again, I'll probably cover it with paper just because of how it is. So you won't be able to see it, but it's just kind of fun. Um, yeah, I really, I can't handle how kind of down that is. So if I can fix that, I might leave it. But if not, I'll cut a new board, which is a little bit sad, but that's okay. All right, so what I have decided is to just flip the board over and do it on the reverse side because then it is overly warped that way, which means it will take longer for it to warp back down. And I think that will be a good kind of compromise. Um, this is actually just attached by, it looks to be long nails. So I'm gonna add a little bit of glue in here also and clamp it and then rehammer in the nails to hold it just so that it's a little more secure. Um, I'm not worried about it coming apart at all. It just makes me feel a little more comfortable to have that extra step put in there. And then, like I said, I am gonna wrap these boards again in some pretty wallpaper, but just so that you can see, it fits perfectly in the reverse just because that's how it was on the other side. And then, I'll put that other board back up under there. All will be right with the world. Found a crack here, so I'm just gonna get that glued and clamped. Um, I feel like this has been apart for a long time, so I don't know how well it's gonna come together, but we can help, right? All right, we're gonna see how this stuff goes. I have not used it yet, but I am intrigued to see how it goes. Well, in person, this looks less splotchy than it does on camera, but it's still not great. It went on a little strong, which I think could be a look, but it's not the look I'm going for. And I don't know if there's just so much oil in the wood that it can't absorb it evenly. So, I don't know, I'm gonna try something else, but this can't stay like this. Maybe I'll let it dry and see what happens. All right, so it's the next day. I've taken off the clamps on this and off the other board. I did 
kind of decide where I'm going to go. So I'm going to take off the rest of this trim because it's going to have to be redone anyways. Um, and then I'm going to strip this whole thing. So I just feel like it's going to give me a better base for figuring out how to get the look that I want. So that's what we're doing. Um, and if you're wondering why I'm not taking off the doors, it is because, here I'll show you. These are nails, not screws. So if I take them out, they will never be as secure as they are now. And I don't want to mess that up since they are still lined up very well and working really well. So this is just gonna be one of the cases where I leave these on because it's better for the piece overall. So just real quick, I went in with the liquid sandpaper because it is a degreaser to try and get as much as that build up off. I mean, there's so much, I can literally feel it on my fingers after I'm finished touching it. So I just, I'm trying to give the stripper as big of a chance. I mean, there's still probably some on there, but now I'm just gonna go into the stripper, see what that does, and then scrape it off, use mineral spirits and all the things. Right, so as you can see, I have removed the trim pieces and then this one had a split in it. So I went ahead and glued that one up. Should be ready to go. go. And it has been split for a long time. There's a big gap there that we can fill in and they had used three nails. So there was one nail in the center there, one over here and one over here. So we'll fill in the two side nails and then we'll just use the single nail when we reattach. On this one here, I've added a little bleach just to see what it does to this. Um, just to see how it's going to go on this wood because I'm going to get ready to sand all of that. Okay, so I have this drawer sanded, and then I have a bottle of 50-50 bleach water and just a bottle, my spray bottle of water. What I'm going to do is give this an even coat of plain water. And then I will take the bleach water and that on there and then also spread it out. So this drawer is kind of my tester so that I can see what's going to happen so I'm not doing it to the overall piece and then it doesn't work out. So we're just seeing what happens here. If it looks good here, we can do it to the other part of the wash dance. So obviously we've got to hand sand some of this because, you know, round and squares don't go together. So I just have a block here with a bit of 220 on it. And so I'm pressing in to get this and then also using it up the sides to get the inside. And this one I was going to pop off since the other one came off while I was sanding which was very convenient, except for this one has several nails <laughs> put into it and they're not through the other side. So I don't want to risk damaging this 
taking them out. They're really flush in there. Okay, so I've got this board moved up into place. And then this down here is where we have the gap. So we're gonna check and see if we can get it to move with the clamp. And we can. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is throw some glue in this and get it clamped up and let it sit overnight. So I'm adding glue in. This didn't wanna pop back out, which is actually great. That means we're gonna have a really tight fit. in a little glue and then, like I said, get it clamped up. All right, as you can see, I have the other side clamped up as well. So we'll let that sit overnight. And then on this drawer, I did, I went back to the white stain that I have and I'm really liking how that looks now. So I think this will be how it goes. So I'll do the bleach, let it sit, do its magic. And then just to kind of even things out and tone them, I will add a little bit of the water-based white stain. All right, these guys have been on overnight. So we're going to remove them and then get started putting the white stain on it. You can see the wood is slightly uneven. This is nothing I can sand through to get to a similar color. So that's why we're going to do the white stain just to kind of tone everything together. So I'm giving the stain a good shake and I'm also going to spray this down with the water to help everything kind of go on more evenly and be a softer finish. I don't want it to look white, you know, like covering up the wood grain. I just want it to be something that's evening things out. So for the trim pieces, I'm going to paint on the stain because I want them to be a bit stronger in color than the rest of the piece. Just for a little bit of contrast. I know I said I wasn't going to take off the hinges, but this one's just too loose, so I'm going to try and get this one out and then see if I can't oh, not destroy it. So this is a really thin screwdriver and I just need to get me a little glue in here. Alright, so you can see I've got this top one mostly out. It is huge. It's hard to see, but yeah, huge. So I'm going to get that the rest of the way out and see what we can do about tightening it up. Yeah, that's the, the nails that they've used on the hinges. So they do have little ridges to help keep them in, but of course they're old and um, obviously they're no longer working. Okay, so since I do want to keep the original nails, I could put screws in and it would fix all the things, but I, when it's like this and they're all that, I like to kind of keep the originality of what's going on. So we're going to try the old, oh geez, this is a little toothpick. Um, a lot of times if screw holes are stripped out, you can add a toothpick in with some wood glue and then put a screw in. I'm going to try that with the nail and see if I can get that to tighten it up at all. So I'm using my knee down here to hold up the door and keep it pushed in. 
while I'm hammering and I'm using one of these guys to help me out. All right, since we're missing some of the trim around here, I'm just going to use existing trim to create a mold so that we can recreate it. And since we're going white on it, I can do it in resin. You could actually do it in clay too, but I'm gonna do it in resin this time because uh, it's just a little bit stiffer and I want it to be uniform like this. So resin, and then I can actually do it white to match everything else. So this is gonna work out quite well. Anyways, this is what I use, Amazing Mold Putty. It's a two-part system. You mix together two equal parts until it is one consistent color and then make the mold. Since I've got those holes on the top part of the marble, from the research that I did, I believe it would have been shelves. Um, I am not capable of making marble shelves, but I do think it'd be fun just to make some cute little shelves. And since I have this scrap piece of wood, um, they're just going to be smaller, but I'm just going to cut out the width, follow this curve in, and then do the same thing on the other side so they'll be matching and then I can use the rest of this board to clip underneath. This is why I save um, things like this, just because you never know when you can eat them, and I think these will make cute little tiny, little tiny shelves. So they probably won't hold much, but it didn't look to me like the original shelves were very large. They would have been about palm-sized, so yeah, I think this will do nicely. So I'm just going to get out my jigsaw and I'm going to kind of finish out this curve down through here with the jigsaw and that's how I'm going to do that. Something like this. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay, I just wasn't happy with this and I'm not sure that I want this end. This side's a little bit bigger, which I want. That's fine. I don't need to shave that down here. But I do want the ends to be the same so I used a pencil and did like a little rub method over the edge that way I can cut this out and have a little template to put there just so that those ends match on the shelf so actually I was fairly close that's not too bad okay I'm going to go in and seal this with some dead flat varnish. This will get two coats. Just so you can see, you got to give it a good stir. It does separate. All right, this guy is all set up so he can come out and we can fill this with resin or essentially anything that you, you could, if you're a hot gluer, you could do hot glue. If you like doing clay, you can do clay, any of those things. As I said before, in this particular instance, I will do resin just because it will work better for this scenario. But clay is usually my go-to because that one's my favorite. Um, I don't have to make a ton of these, so resin will be fine. And then this can obviously be used for future things. I save all of these. All right, so I'm covering the boards with this scrap piece of wallpaper I had in my drawer. I save all my scraps of wallpaper, so this is from an old dresser that I had done. Um, I'll link that video where I was showing how to do wallpaper and also getting the same textured look with paint and tools so yeah we're gonna cover this with wallpaper so i got on the back bracer i flipped my clamp around to be a stretcher and it's essentially just 
holding it up there for me because I obviously couldn't get a clamp in there. Awesome. So today I can also take off the masking tape that I put on just to help keep the edges down of the wallpaper. So that'll come off today too. But yeah, shelves are good. I think I'm going to put a center brace in the back here because there isn't one and I want to make sure that this back section is supported. So we've got support all the way around with the exception of the back and the wood does bow a little bit. So that's what we're going to do and then call the inside done. dark khaki which is a very similar tone to the wood itself and it's just going to help even it out a bit more you know sometimes poplar has some of those really heavy tonal changes so that's why I'm doing this and I just mixed up a wash again there's tons of different ways to do washes um, I do washes a ton of different ways for right now I just mixed up a batch of it inside a container. I'm just going to brush it on and then wipe it off. This drawer also seems a bit lighter than everything else, so I kind of wanted it to be toned in as well. Now that that wash is dry, I'm just going to seal again with the dead flat varnish and then add on all of the trim pieces. So I will do one coat without the trim pieces on and then once I get them on, I will do another coat over the top of them just to kind of help seal them. All right, so now that I have this on, I'm just going to take the same wash and tone it. And it will also wet distress when I go to wipe it back because this cabinet is old and we want it to keep that kind of original look and feel. So I'm just gonna paint this on here. And since it's not sealed, when I go to wipe it back, I'm also going to kind of scrub a little bit with my cloth to give it more of an aged look so it doesn't look so bright. And I'm gonna do that to all the pieces that we did. And then since it's the same wash we used on the cabinet, it will look just fine going on over the top of this. All right, as I said, I'm doing this in resin, so I've got the two-part amazing casting resin I'm gonna mix these together and do our first cast So I found that this likes to expand a little bit and on these ones, since I want the back completely flat, I'm making sure that I don't go any higher than necessary because it'll just make a bigger issue of it being able to adhere to the cabinet. All right, I ended up figuring out how to get the clamps on there, so that's where we're at. I'm just going in with a little bit of touch-up paint to make sure these are all good to go.
So I'm going to reattach this hook just because it's here. It's part of it. It's a really cool old hook. And so I'm just going to measure out the hook put in, figure out where it needs to go. So about there. Just to mark it. And then I put the original screw that was there, which I'm pretty sure was a new screw, it wasn't an old screw. So I pulled these screws from my stash. So these fit in perfectly. However, since they're so large, I will have two free drill holes because I don't want to split this wood. So what I'm doing here is lining up where the screws are coming out. and then I can just do the center of the wood. that I went more cream just because it goes with the top so much better. We of course created little mini shelves. I'm, from the research that I did, that's kind of where it seemed like um, that was gonna head just because I think they did have small shelves. I think these are probably a little smaller than what they would have typically had. However, I think most people will be using the full surface and shelves would kind of get in the way so I was trying to keep them pushed back further so that there was more actual space along the bottom. Now this would make an excellent nightstand or just like a um, little extra storage cabinet in an entryway or something to that effect. I mean most of us don't need washstands anymore. <laughs> we have actual sinks but I mean this is just darling. and. We've got the little hook installed so it's working all nicely the shelf was switched over and this one down here i didn't um adhere it in it's fully safe because it's it has the little wedged in corners um but it can be removed very easily and then this one here is also just stuck on with a bit of high glue and that is with the wallpaper on it so that can all be removed and it won't do any damage to anything further and you guys know that that's kind of what I like to do with these old antique pieces is I want to make sure that they're that whoever wants them in the future can fully restore it back to where it needs to be um, but it just gives it a little bit of protection on its journey through life but I just I adore this if this was a little bit taller I would keep it for myself it's just a little bit too low for what I would use it for, but man, it is so cute. Also, 
back in the shop. <laughs> do you guys miss it as much as I do? It's so teeny tiny in here and it's just, it's weird being back working in here, but it's still fun. So it's also hot. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.